Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chartwise Women with Erin Swenlin and Mary Ellen McGonigal. Welcome to our Thursday, December 17th Chartwise Women Show. Of course, we're going to be running this a little bit longer because we have a lot of stocks and information to share with you that will be helpful moving into 2021. So we're going to be a little bit of an evergreen show in, in uh, the holiday fashion here. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Mary Ellen, how are you doing? Are you prepared for the holidays? Oh, gosh, that would be an, a no with capital letters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as often happens out here, I know back east, they're having these this huge winter storm. And while it's probably not pleasant, uh, it's certainly a little more holiday uh, spirited than warm, breezy, balmy. <laughs> <laughs> but but certainly mentally, yes, ready. Uh, yes, yes so. it's going to be difficult. I'm very sad because this will be the first Christmas where really I haven't seen my daughters. I mean, it's mm, mm. with unfortunately with our lockdowns here in California and and where I live, Redlands being kind of a hot spot right now. Mm. I am opting to have them stay home and postpone our Christmas gathering. So wow, with vaccines and all of that, we'll be able to to get back together soon. That is that is so good of you. I know. I. I but let's bet. talk about lighter things. Today we're going to uh, focus in on most likely to succeed, not from your yearbook, but from our stock knowledge. And we have lots of things to discuss as far as which indexes, sectors that we think are most likely to succeed in 2021. Felt that was a great uh, opportunity for us to not only look back on which ones have done well, but to also look what we think will be happening in going into 2021. All right, so shall we get started of with course. our wisdom of the week? Mm -hmm. All right, so my thought is, you know, when I'm going, everybody asks us this time of year, Mary Ellen, you know, what is our forecast? What do we see for 2021? And really it's, you know, we don't have crystal balls. So what we are left with, of course, is analyzing those charts. And a lot of times you'll find that if a chart or if a stock, if an index has a history of su success, that that usually will lead to more success moving in to the future. And I like to use those monthly charts and weekly charts to give me a, a sense of where a stock or ETF is gonna go. Very good. Yeah, I totally agree. And my wisdom of the week talks about having a game plan. And by that, I mean, uh, certainly listening to this show and elsewhere really get an idea of where you want to focus next year. My work is all about uncovering where the growth is. Where is it currently? Where is the anticipated growth? And then within that, uncovering the best stocks to capitalize on that. So I'm going to be sharing with you some of that intel because going forward next quarter, there is anticipation that we will see some nice growth prospects particularly if lockdowns are able to get minimized. So that will be the focus. But again, having that concept and uh, where you want to focus will really help improve your success rate. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we preach this all the time about having a plan, having a, a structured approach to what you do. So I think that rolls right on into that. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our first most likely to succeed. And so I asked Mary Ellen, as and of course myself, which index is the most likely to succeed going into next year? Would you like to share your yours first? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So what I am focused on, or this, this ETF that I'm going to share with you is one that is actually on my MEM Edge list from my newsletter. And it's not often that I plop on an ETF, but this one just had to be done because it's in the biotech space. It's ARKG, ARK Genomic Revolution. And this uh, particular company or ETF, as the name implies, they, the companies underlying within it are those that are in 
the genomic, whether it's sequencing, there's now an ability using CRISPR technology to actually revert and change an individual's genes so that they are more receptive to a drug. They're, that's happening right now with blood uh, sickle cell anemia, where they're actually able to change the geno genomic makeup of an individual so that the, uh, there's just lots going on. And it's also cancer related. So the innovation there is really driving those underlying stocks higher. And we can see it's had a nice move here of late pausing as well it should. So, but I would definitely keep this ETF on your radar screen simply because they are at the cutting edge as far as using technology, the underlying companies in the ETF. And it does appear uh, poised for continued further upside. The FDA has increased their approval, uh, reduced approval times and increased their number of approvals for new drugs. And all of that is being driven by technology, a lot of it COVID driven as far as bringing all these technologies together to find a cure in record time, uh, find a vaccine that's being then translated into other diseases and other areas. So uh, this is my pick. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show everybody my look, I have a chart that I, I use regularly. Well, not totally regularly. I look at it regularly uh, and I, I will put it in the decision point alert newsletters when I want to point out something. But since we were talking about, you know, the success of some of these different indexes, I thought it'd be interesting to see what their success rate was this year to give us an idea of what we could expect in the future. And so you'll notice at the top, this is the SPY and from the bear market low to, well, just a little bit higher than where we're at right now, that's about a 72 and a half percent gain that we're seeing. But when you go down and look at some of the other indexes, I think it becomes a little bit more clear as to which index uh, probably will have the advantage going into next year. And I have to say, you know, our small and mid caps have really started to perform and outperform the large caps. And, you know, the New York Stock Exchange, the composite, of course, this is, you know, all the cats and dogs, if you will, <laughs> inside of that index. And, you know, when you look at the index as a whole, when you look at the uh, NYSE, you know, we've only gotten about a 68.7% gain. But the place where you really see a lot of uh, inform a lot of growth, if you will, is in the Nasdaq Composite. And of course, you know, you were bringing up that technology, the uh, innovation that are coming out, and this is exactly where it's planted: is right into the Nasdaq Composite, where you have a little bit more emphasis on technology. And of course, I mean, we know as far as sectors go. Uh, technology seems to be pretty steady uh, to the upside. All right, let's go ahead and look now at what sector we think is most likely to succeed. And then I added besides tech, because as I was just saying, I think the technology sector is, is going to be a winner uh, regardless. And, you know, certainly it can lead to the downside. I'm not saying that will never go down, but I think we've always seen a lot more outperformance in tech, it certainly leads the market to the upside. And so I figured, well, we better not include that sector. I think we all believe that that one's most likely to succeed. So I, I felt like we should check into second place. And I don't know about you, Mary Ellen, I'm gonna share my screen, but I'm partial going forward uh, with consumer discretionary. And one of the reasons is exactly what you were talking about at the beginning of the show is the fact that, you know, this is where, um, you know, when we get those lockdowns uh, starting to pull back, maybe we start seeing demand for vacations, for, you know, specialty products. This is the kind of place you're going to look for that is in the consumer discretionary sector. And you can see already here that we're getting a move very nice off of that 20 day EMA in the shorter term here. And I suspect uh, given the look, I'm gonna even show you my weekly chart here. Let's get that. 
So you can see as far as a weekly chart, I can go in and we can annotate and just see how successful it's been coming out of that bear market low. And it's actually been a better performer than all of those indexes that I just showed you. So I think this is going to be a really powerful area. Yes, you know, momentum is a bit overbought. Yes, the RSI is a little bit getting overbought. But I think you can see right here that it's flattened out, but we're I li likely we're going to see that turn right back up. You can already see that. PMO on the weekly chart trying to turn up. So I think consumer discretionary is going to be a sector to watch, at least for me. I don't know. What are you thinking? Yeah, consumer discretionary historically and by nature, they do tend to do well going February into March. They are the last companies that report earnings during earnings season. And oftentimes what will occur is after that holiday, Chris, uh, that holiday Christmas uh, period and uh, Hanukkah as well. When people are purchasing goods, they report those numbers in February and March. So depending on the uh, vibrancy there, they do historically tend to do well in that first quarter anyway. But I understand what you're saying as far as going forward as well. It's just uh, despite the uh, unemployment and so forth, the consumer confidence levels remain high and uh, retail sales did drop this uh, November, but overall they've been super strong. Absolutely, here's a seasonality just to get a, a sense of mm -hmm. what we're talking about. And you can see as far as price um, movement goes, we do see a lot of that um, positivity here at the end of the year, like you were saying. And we do have positive numbers going into January and February as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super. All right. Let's go ahead then. I think we'll spend a little extra time on this next subject before. Uh, actually, let's go into a break. I always try and forget it. I get so excited about what we're talking about. <laughs> let's take a short break and we're going to come back with some more uh, stocks and we're going to look at ETFs that th we think going into 2021 are most likely to succeed. We'll be right back. are back. Aaron and I are sharing with you our outlooks going into 2021. And then from there, talking about particular sectors, and then individual stocks that we think are poised to succeed into next year. So I'm going to share my screen quickly and talk about a sector that is a sub industry grouping that it is within technology. We're looking at the semiconductor SOXX, and we can look at a longer term chart just to give you a little more perspective because it has been doing really quite well for some time, but that doesn't mean that the best is behind us. Semiconductor stocks are cyclical. They do well when the company, uh, when the economy is expanding, and we are currently going into that period. A lot of cyclical stocks doing well, but more importantly is a lot in the way of cutting edge technology is taking place. Semiconductor chips are getting smaller. They're getting more powerful. They're at the forefront of 5G, cloud data storage, and on and on. Every industry is touched by these semiconductor chips and the demand is high. So this is an area that I anticipate will continue to expand and grow uh, going into next year. 
Yep, I, I definitely like that space. And I know, um, you know, software is another space in that uh, technology group that I certainly like. Are there any other uh, sp particular stocks that you're looking at? Yes, so let's go ahead back to that semiconductor concept. And I do have uh, several stocks. Uh, they did pull back last week. They pulled back about 3%, but they are recovering. So let me go ahead and share one of uh, several names. This is Advanced Micro Devices, AMD. And we can see that the stock is breaking out of a multi-month Base. And the company is involved in several growth areas. One, of course, is gaming. Uh, gaming sales going into the holiday have been super strong. They provide chips to that industry. They're also in 5G. So they're in a lot of growth areas. And the stock is in, uh, again, breaking out of this nice longer term base and does appear poised for uh, further upside going forward. I like it. All righty, let me see. I'm going to grab it. And uh, most people probably know where I've been um, spending a lot of my time and where I think that we're going to see some exceptional growth. And that is in the solar space. I've been a big uh, supporter, if you will, of the, the solar stocks. And I've continued to throw some of those in to my decision point diamonds. After we get some pullbacks in this space, it is an excellent time to enter. So right now you can see we've had these pullbacks. This is the uh, solar ETF. So if you don't want to be open to quite as much risks, it's because like biotechs, a lot of times some of the solar companies can can give you a wild ride from one day to the next. And if you just don't have the stomach for that, an ETF is a great way to spread uh, your exposure over a lot of those solar stocks. So you tend to not see uh, quite the volatility, at least on that ETF. Now, obviously right now we're looking shorter term here, we are looking at some overbought conditions, but you know, some of, one of the things that I like to do is when I see something overbought, I like to go into history and see what happened the last time it was overbought. So in this case, that was about a 10% pullback. The pullback here was about 18, 15%. So that's a little bit uh, tough to, to uh, deal with, but you can see back here too, we had about an 18% loss. So the last time we didn't get uh, too heavy of a pullback, uh, so I suspect we're going to continue to see that growth moving forward and momentum is certainly going to the upside. You can see the volume continues to come in. And if I were to look at some, some of the places that I really like as far as solar goes, um, I, I actually do own SunPower right now. So I'm going to show it to you because I like it <laughs> for obvious reasons. I wouldn't uh, have it. I own it. Um, mm -hmm. And like you can see, we can get these big swings to the up and the downside. But I really like the way this one has come. It pulled back, it keeps coming back, it pulled back. And these pullbacks to the 20 and even in this case, the 50 have offered some excellent entries. Right now it's on the move. So getting this decline, starting to see that RSI turnover. Uh, you know, we might get a better entry here, but honestly, I think it's going to be a giant winner going yeah. into 20. And I did want to share one other characteristic that is expected to continue to drive these stocks higher, and that is uh, Biden has plans to put in place a $2 trillion climate plan uh, in place. And a lot of that is going to be allocating money toward the development and continued advance among these renewable energy stocks. And I think we're just really uh, fuel cell technology. We are at the cusp at the very beginning of explosive growth uh, throughout the industry. I absolutely agree. And you know, if you wanna look at where it was after, here's its bear market low. Uh, the growth right now, oops, I gotta do it this way, hang on we are looking at about 965% gain in solar since that bear market low. That, that was just a tiny little hiccup 
for mm. solar. And wow. I suspect, as you said, we're going to continue to see that growth. Yeah, the- Warren Buffett just, uh, he announced plans in January, I believe in May, he opened a uh, big solar in Nevada uh, field. So it's it's definitely gaining traction in a lot Absolutely. of places. Absolutely. And here's another one. Um, this actually was on uh, my diamonds list yesterday. I presented this one, uh, having a better day than sun power, it appears. And I, I pointed it out mainly because we were just about ready to get a breakout here. We had a perfectly textbook um, a rising or ascending triangle. You know, you get the flat top and then the rising bottoms. And the expectation is a breakout. And sure enough, that's exactly what we're seeing right now. We just got the buy signal coming in on the price momentum oscillator. And you can see the RSI has been very positive and it's not that overbought right now. So Mm. I think that, uh, like I said, I I offered it as a possible entry yesterday. And with this new breakout, I think that this could be a a good entry going forward, even though we are looking at all time highs. I'll race you to the trading uh, desk. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And this is under that technology space. So like I said, we were looking at some of our favorite um, sectors and areas in the market. And we kind of excluded technology to some degree when we were looking at the sectors, because again, this is just, this sector just tends to lead and do particularly well. Did you have any other stocks you wanted to share? Well, there is, uh, there were a couple I was gonna share within the space that you are uh, reviewing right now, Alternative Energy. And this one is uh, just breaking out. It's called Renewable Energy Group, R-E-G-I. And I can just take a second here and mark this particular chart up. I actually own this one. Uh, I picked it up here on this base breakout. My son is uh, works in renewable energy, fuel cell, and he told me last week this was his favorite stock. So uh, in, oh, his nice. honor, in his honor. Um, Yeah, so it has had this nice base breakout here. We've gotten nice volume and the stock is now in a nice confirmed uptrend. It is a little bit extended. Uh, It's up another 4% today. Not sure that I would chase it, but definitely looks, you can see, you wanna see historical uh, precedents where the stock can have nice uh, lengthy advances. So that's a name there. I like that. No, I think that this is going to be a really interesting space moving forward. And I do agree with you that that technology, um, semiconductors, software, all of those are really lining up nicely. Um, Mm -hmm. Did you have any other favorite stocks that you had in mind? Oh, uh, and you're referring to overall? Any oh my all. gosh. Yeah, this I this is one that I've owned for a while. It's my fan fan fave and they've actually started advertising and I love their ads. Uh, <laughs> this is Etsy. It's a little bit out and up and out, but it is a consumer discretionary. Aaron, you talked about this industry. This is online only. They do not have any brick and mortar stores and they are a platform for those we've talked about that are crafty, that they can sell their wares and then individuals uh, can of course purchase them. The platform is very digitally, technologically advanced. And so that when you go back, it knows what you like, it suggests it's just super vibrant. And the stock is in a very confirmed uptrend. They, their big move out of here was all about making masks, but they've expanded to where their home furnishings, uh, but a lot of quirky yet really unique uh, items for on Etsy for those that haven't visited the platform uh, take a peek it's uh, but we can see it's again a little extended here in the near term but I'm looking longer term into next year it's really has uh, a record number of new subscribers last quarter I think they're going to continue to grow I absolutely agree and I'm going to share one more uh, that I like, and that is currently home builders. I don't know what you're thinking about that area, mm, yeah, but perfect. right now they really are starting to take off. Um, this is Pulte Group, and I will tell you that uh, I did sell this one yesterday. <laughs> so mm. um, wishing I hadn't, but um, I well, picked yeah, up they- a lot of uh, gain from back <laughs> here. So it was time to book some of those profits uh, going Mm -hmm. into the holidays. But you can see really nice breakout today. 
And, you know, the home builders, like I said, there's just, there's a lot of interesting um, stocks in that area. This is NVR. Uh, it's a very, very small cap stock. So you, you want to, uh, I mean, it's the low volume stock. Um, it's still a large cap, but just uh, keep, keep that in mind. But you can see mm -hmm. another really nice move, another big breakout for the home builders. Yeah, housing starts came out today and the numbers were really well above estimates. So I think that could be the push we're seeing here uh, currently, but the interest rate environment, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see yeah, how, that, how that works out. And now I have to consider a re-entry <laughs> mm. the space. <laughs> well, that's good to have that flexibility that you're not turned off. Certainly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can see there were, there. It's not that it was doing that badly, but you know, it was just setting up. You've got your sort of head and shoulders mm -hmm. lined up here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just going into the holidays, I wasn't feeling so comfortable, but. Uh, all right. Hey, well, we, all, we all have that happen. Let's go ahead and, and get to our final segment. Yeah, that happened. Mary Ellen, tell us about this story. That you of course, yes. We scour the globe for interesting headlines. And this week it's coming from Japan. A, an apparel manufacturer has come up with, with what is called a pajama suit. And actually, Aaron, we were able to take a, a look at some photos and it's it looks like the person is wearing the suit. They had a gentleman and it was a cardigan sweater uh, all set up. And it's all about being comfortable while working from home, yet still looking uh, dressed up. So it's a it's a one piece pajama. Suit. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if it was uh, if it had a back door on it, if it was <laughs> I thought that they were they were onesies when I first saw the story, and I was like, "Oh no, this is this is great." Yeah. Um, although I don't know that I need to give up my yoga pants. And <laughs> right, well, we're all going to have our own level, but again, you know, I I don't know how I would feel if I were uh, in a really serious business suit type of meeting, and I knew that I had pajamas <laughs> pajamas on. I think that would be a little psych psych out. But let's take a look at some stocks that come uh, that are relate it to that. And the first one, of course, we can take a look at, at is Zoom. And that is, of course, one of the number one areas continues to be where people uh, do have these meetings. And we can see the stock had this explosive move. It's Their growth numbers were just astronomical. But more recently, they came out with numbers and the growth is uh, very clearly slowing. But of course, these numbers were super big. But the stock is uh, in a downtrend right now. So we'd want to see a reversal out of that. The momentum indicators are both negative as well. Erin, uh, you want to take yes. uh, the next one because it was one of your picks on your Yes, it was diamond. a decision point diamond. Uh, let me go ahead and look at it. And that would be Stitch Fix. Mm -hmm. And uh, always nice to have one of my diamonds gap up and, and do so well. Um, I picked it early December. So we did have to endure a little bit of a decline before we got the pop, but it did exactly what it was supposed to. It hit that support level, hit the 50 and has just taken off. I've mm -hmm. talked about it many times on the program. Well, I think uh, you, a, you use their services, yes? I do use their services and I treated myself to a Christmas present of two stitch fixes this month. So oh. I... Yeah, I'm very those, happy. Yep, for those not familiar, it's a platform where they deliver clothing to you and they get to know your style. And if you are not pleased, you can send it back. Yeah, but uh, and my, I'll tell you, they know my stylist knows me now. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> it That's is great, great. especially think we, for the ladies that don't, uh, which is rare, but that don't like to go out and shop. That's me. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. Well, particularly my now. clothes for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> RNG is a competitor to Zoom. It's uh, RNG is the ticker Ring Central software company. If you want to pull that up, and mm -hmm. the stock is uh, again, it does have a tele. Uh, communications aspect to it where people can stay connected and the stock has really had a nice move here broken out of a base gapped up today I didn't realize another five percent mm -hmm. but uh, they're they're coming out with some good growth numbers there so I think that's it We're all right thank you so much for watching everybody hope you have a great holiday and we will be back in January happy trading 
Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.